on your doorstep, Purton. Autumn. Pear orchards plumped with perry, bad breezes whispered the ears off fern fields. On Kemp runways where the gadflies soared, are organised by airmen, command posts secured. Meanwhile in the North Sea, Heriwood the Wake carried Boar Gold and the Queen of Orange. She travelled with her guard to rest on Purton Ridge. An airman flew in and out. Fledglings took to their wings. Guards are observed, brain guns inspected. Cartoons of Tettenhall Hills drawn on spinning tops. Year upon year as Europe burned, Purton lay steady until the victory and the Queen took her gold home. Leather clad racers took to the runways whilst town planners had other designs. Canada geese and lapwings the late flights as homes grew from the tangled overgrowth. Roads named of Saxons, rivers, poets and battlefields circled and weaved to all was meet at Sainsbury's. The control tower relief for friendly pursuit as a community gathered from Wolfram's lands bringing clip-clop shoes and Red Cross medals, making parks and gardens from codsall seedlings, dancing tiptoed, avoiding the frogs in the underpass until a glider with the widest span of wooden wings settled the library's crown to rest alongside the airstrip. The village settled its presence into our daily chronicles. They rubbed out the runways like pencil lines on elapsed plots, along with the air raid shelters and cells in the Bluebell Woods, leaving only aerial photographs of geometric tarmac, fading remembrances kept alive of the poppy rock. Around the island lake are players, dancers, workers and poets, grandparents, mothers, fathers, children, friends and familiars. Purton lives with its youthful history, making much from little. On your doorstep, Canuck. Gathered in the glass case are several stints. Toil of coal strength, hammering tin and pruning borders, sewing scallop shells from pressed metal, curios in practical ironmongery, from a pin to an elephant. Feet walk in solid, guaranteed leather. Good wear, written on sweat. Phrases, familiar phrases in unfamiliar times, ignored wars, diaries of laundered words and trips to the sea, school reports that must try harder, maintaining standards, performing deeds, transferring land when St Luke bore witness, overseer of passing time. Smoke calm bees serve a harvest of honey, prayers at Easter posted on cards, search for hope, listening for a Messerschmitt's low hum, eking out rations, feeding by flying squads, making plans for a merry England that never was, crafting sweets out of boiled gum, pressed through pear drop ringers, whilst the rest of the world rode in on plastic ponies. We leave to our grandchildren this, our history, our passions, our possessions, living and local, hard times, good times, all gathered under glass.
on your doorstep, you toxic to. It was on a Wednesday when Dr Johnson once stood in the rain, penance to his childhood lazy guilt. Maybe his thoughts were of spiders and flies, or cabbages and earthy potatoes, as the market store smells gathered around him. He did not see the circus parade. Or the cake made for the Queen at Elks' Biscuit Factory on Cheadle Road. He never heard the clip of hoof on cobble as a Jennings made coach whistled on its way. Nor did he see a Bamford tractor handle a draftsman's compass set, dirty his hands in engine oil. He was not from this town and may have just been an unknown face like those unmarked family photographs that live in shoe boxes in the attics and are worried about by grandmothers and now the young have all gone digital. They remember the Tressy dolls and action men, the rambles over the fields from dawn till tea. Even though the school became a car park and the cattle market morphed into a supermarket, the dance tunes changed at the paddock suite, and though the town still floods with punters spilling full lap to watch fillies fly along furlongs, they remembered that this town, where everyone knows your name, and time is marked by mantel clocks, and families and communities still flourish, the pavements are paved with Petey's gold. <laughs>